Hi, this is Mariah. Welcome to your Daily Mana, Day 38. Today, we're reading Genesis chapter 38. Now, last time in chapter 37, we read about Joseph and his brothers and how Judah had the horrible idea of selling him to the merchants going to Egypt. Now, what kind of man would do such a thing? Well, we're going to do a little bit of reading here to find out more about his character in this chapter 38. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. It happened at that time that Judah went down from his brothers and turned aside to a certain Adulamite, whose name was Hira. There Judah saw the daughter of a certain Canaanite, whose name was Shua. He took her and went into her, and she conceived and bore a son, and he called his name Ur. She conceived again and bore a son, and she called his name Onan. Yet again she bore a son, and she called his name Shelah. Judah was in Chizab when she bore him. And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. But Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord put him to death. Then Judah said to Onan, Go into your brother's wife, and perform the duty of a brother-in-law to her, and raise up offspring for your brother. But Onan knew that the offspring would not be his, so whenever he went into his brother's wife, he would waste the semen on the ground so as not to give offspring to his brother. And what he did was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and he put him to death also. Then Judah said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow in your father's house, till Shelah my son grows up. For he feared that he would die, like his brothers. So Tamar went and remained in her father's house. In the course of time, the wife of Judah, Shua's daughter, died. When Judah was comforted, he went up to Timnah to his sheep shearers, he and his friend Hira the Abdullamite. And when Tamar was told, Your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear his sheep, she took off her wedding garments and covered herself with a veil, wrapping herself up, and set the entrance to a name, in which is on the road to Timnah, for she saw that Shelah was grown up, and she had not been given to him in marriage. When Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute, for she had covered her face. He turned to her at the roadside and said, Come, let me come in to you. For he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. She said, What will you give me, that you may come in to me? He answered, I'll send you a young goat from the flock. And she said, If you give me a pledge until you send it. He said, What pledge shall I give you? She replied, Your signet and your cold and your staff that is in your hand. So he gave them to her. And he went into her, and she conceived by him. Then she arose and went away, and taken off her veil, she put on the garments of her widowhood. When Judah sent the young goat by his friend the Abdullamite to take back the pledge from the woman's hand, he did not find her. And he asked the man of the place, Where is the cult prostitute? Who is at Ename? At the roadside. And they said, No cult prostitute has been here. So he returned to Judah and said, I have not found her. Also the men of the place said, No cult prostitute has been here. And Judah replied, Let her keep the things as her own, or we shall be laughed at. You see, I sent this young goat, and you did not find her. About three months later, Judah was told, Tamar, your daughter-in-law, has been immoral. Moreover, she is pregnant by immorality. And Judah said, Bring her out and let her be burned. As she was being brought out, she sent word to her father-in-law, By the man to whom these belong, I am pregnant. And she said, Please identify who these are, the signet and the cold and the staff. Then Judah identified them and said, She is more righteous than I, since I did not give her to my son Sheila. And he did not know her again. When the time of her labor came, there were twins in her womb. And when she was in labor, one put out a hand, and the midwife took and tied a scarlet thread on his hand, saying, This one came out first. But as he drew back his hand, behold, his brother came out. And she said, What a breach you have made for yourself. Therefore, his name was called Pyrrhus. Afterward, his brother came out with the scarlet thread on his hand, and his name was called Zara. And that was our reading of Genesis chapter 38. Now, what are we to make of all this? Here we have Judah, apparently not concerned about continuing his family line. And in fact, he even blames Tamar for the death of his sons. You know, 
Unfortunately, in that time, and even today in some places around the world, if a woman becomes a widow, it doesn't matter how the husband died, it was her fault. Somehow she's to blame. And that's exactly how Judah treated Tamar. That's why he didn't want to give Sheila to her. And um, unfortunately, Tamar was so desperate to maintain the family that she had to uh, trick Judah into having sex with her so she can conceive and maintain a place in the family. And why do you think she would do that? I mean, obviously Judah didn't care about her. It wasn't because he loved her or even his sons. I mean, they just used and abused her. I mean, even Onan, he refused to get Tamar pregnant, not just because he didn't want to be a dad, thinking, oh, it's not going to be my son. But if he would have gotten her pregnant, the inheritance would have gone to Tamar and the boy, not to him. So he was just thinking about himself and you know, just not a good man, you know. So if he had that going on in his heart, most likely he had other things that added up to God deciding, okay, man, you're, you're done here. Goodbye. Nice knowing you. Anyways, um, so maybe the reason why Tamar wanted to stay in the line, because if you look at the genealogy of um, all throughout Israel, it is through the line of Judah that Christ comes. And obviously Judah does not deserve that honor. However, um, God uses people and we are messy by nature. And it's just amazing how he, despite our messiness, our sin, in our weak faith, he decides to use weak people so he can make himself known his greatness. And I think Tamar kind of understood that. Remember, she came from the Canaanites, and they worship pagan deities and goddesses. And in some sects of paganism, people even sacrifice children to demons. So if that's what you grew up with, and then all of a sudden you're introduced to this powerful God that actually cares about the poor and cares about justice and love, I mean... Who would you choose? Maybe she fell in love with God and wanted to maintain her place in the family just so she can have not have to go back to her pagan lifestyle. Maybe that's what won her heart. And um, unfortunately for her, she had to do unspeakable things for that to happen. Um, anyway, so that concludes our reading of Genesis chapter 38. Tomorrow, we're going to read Genesis chapter 39. That's about Joseph and Potiphar's wife. More scandal on the way. Thank you for listening in and God bless. Until next time, bye for now.